Human fingers that wrote the Bible, the Quran and the Vedas, and it is our minds that give these stories power. They are no doubt beautiful stories, but their beauty is strictly in the eyes of the beholder. Jerusalem, Mecca, Varanasi and Bodh Gaya are sacred places, but only because of the feelings humans experience when they go there. In itself, the universe is only a meaningless hodgepodge of atoms. Nothing is beautiful, sacred or sexy, but human feelings make it so. It is only human feelings that make a red apple seductive and a turd disgusting. Take away human feelings, and you are left with a bunch of molecules. We hope to find meaning by fitting ourselves into some ready-made story about the universe, but according to the liberal interpretation of the world, the truth is exactly the opposite. The universe does not give me meaning. I give meaning to the universe. This is my cosmic location. I have no fixed destiny or dharma. If I find myself in Samba's or Arjuna's shoes, I can choose to fight for the crown of a kingdom, but I don't have to. I can just as well join a wandering circus, go to Broadway to sing in a musical, or move to Silicon Valley and launch a startup. I am free to create my own dharma. Thus, like all other cosmic stories, the liberal story too starts with a creation narrative. It says that the creation occurs every moment, and I am the creator. What then is the aim of my life? To create meaning by feeling, by thinking, by desiring, and by inventing. Anything that limits the human liberty to feel, to think, to desire, invent, limits the meaning of the universe. Hence liberty from such limitations is the supreme ideal. In practical terms, those who believe in the liberal story live by the light of two commandments, create and fight for liberty. Creativity can manifest itself in writing a poem, exploring your sexuality, inventing a new app, or discovering an unknown chemical. Fighting for liberty includes anything that frees people from social, logical and physical constraints, be it demonstrating against brutal dictators, teaching girls to read, finding a cure for cancer, or building a spaceship. The liberal pantheon of heroes houses Rosa Parks and Pablo Picasso alongside Louis Pasteur and the Wright brothers. This sounds extremely exciting. Found in theory. Unfortunately, human freedom and human creativity are not what the liberal story imagines them to be. To the best of our scientific understanding, there is no magic behind our choices and creations. They are the product of billions of neurons exchanging biochemical and even if you liberate humans from the yoke of the Catholic Church and the Soviet Union, their choices will still be dictated by biochemical algorithms as ruthless as the Inquisition and the KGB. The liberal story instructs me to seek freedom to express and realize self. But both the self and freedom are mythological chimeras borrowed from the fairy tales of ancient times. Liberalism has a particularly loose notion of free will. Humans obviously have a will, they have desires, and they are sometimes free to fulfill their desires. If by free will you mean the freedom to do what you desire, then yes, humans have free will. But if by free will you mean the freedom to choose what you desire, then no, humans have no free will sexually attracted to men, I may be free to realize my fantasies, but I am not free to feel an attraction to women instead. In some cases I might dis restrain my sexual urges or even try a sexual conversion therapy, but the very desire to change my sexual orientation is something forced upon me by my neurons egged on perhaps by cultural and religious biases. 
Why does one person feel ashamed of his sexuality and strives to alter it, while another celebrates the same sexual desires without a trace of guilt? You can say that the former might have stronger religious feelings than the latter, but do people freely choose whether to have strong or weak religious feelings? Again, a person may decide to go to church every Sunday in a conscious effort to strengthen his weak religious feelings, but why does one person aspire to be more religious, while another is perfectly happy to remain an atheist? This may result from any number of cultural land dispositions, but it is never the result of free will. What's true of sexual desire is true of all desire, and indeed of all feelings and thoughts. Just consider the next thought that pops up in your mind. Where did it come from? Did you freely choose to think it, and only then did you think it? Certainly not. The process of self-exploration begins with simple things, and becomes progressively harder. At first, we realize that we do control the world outside us. I don't decide when it rains. Then we realize that we do not control what's happening inside our own body. I don't control my blood pressure. Next, we understand that we don't even govern our brain. I don't tell the neurons when to fire. Ultimately, we should realize that we do not control our desires or even our reactions. To these desires. Realizing this can help us become less obsessive about our opinions, about our feelings, and about our desires. We don't have free will, but we can be a bit more free from the tyranny of our will. Humans usually give so much importance to their desires that they try to control the entire world according to these desires. In pursuit of their cravings, Humans fly to the moon, wage world wars, and destabilize the entire ecosystem. If we understand that our desires are not the magical manifestations of free choice, but rather are the product of biochemical processes, influenced by cultural factors that are also beyond our control, we might be less preoccupied with them. It is better to understand selves our minds and our desires rather than try to realize whatever fantasy pops up in our heads. And in order to understand